Good afternoon. Welcome to the Government House Weekly Press Briefing for the week of March 2nd. I am Communications Director Richard Mota. Uh, with us this afternoon, we have uh, the Department of Health with Commissioner Hustain Kanasiong and officials from the Department of Health, including Dr. Esther Ellis, the territory's uh, epidemiologist, and uh, Ms. Francine Lang. Also, the director of the Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency, uh, Mr. Daryl Jashin. We also have with us the acting CEO from the, J the JFL Hospital uh, in St. Croix, uh, acting uh, CEO, Dima, Ms. Dima Williams. And we also have the CEO for the Schneider Regional Medical Center, Dr. Louis Amaro. Um, we are here this afternoon to provide information to the Virgin Islands public on a matter of uh, important uh, concern for many in the public. Uh, it's the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. Uh, but before we turn the briefing over to uh, the, Department, the Department of Health, I'd like to uh, call to the podium uh, the Governor of the United States Virgin Islands, Governor Albert Bryan Jr. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as we all are, most of us are aware, over the last several months or uh, weeks, we've been dealing with a public health crisis internationally of coronavirus. Um, here in the territory, no doubt, we have been uh, none less vi vigilant, making sure that we keep the public apprised of all the situations that are going on in the world um, as well as the nation. The reason we are late today is that we just got off the phone with the White House. Uh, Governor, Vice President Pence addressed all of the governors of the nation. Uh, we have different things going on throughout the nation with the coronavirus, but one of the main intents was to assure us that the federal government has, um, has uh, pledged their full support towards uh, combating this public health concern. Uh, along with uh, Vice President Pence, they were coordinating people such as Doug Holscher from the White House, as well as Secretary of Human Health and Human Services, uh, Secretary Azores. Um, they have reported, uh, to, as of to date, they have about 87,000 cases of coronavirus in the world. Over the last 48 hours, there have been 1,700 new cases. Uh, so far, there's about 2,700 deaths worldwide. Uh, in the United States, there are 43 cases that have been found from people who have contracted the virus in the United States and another 48 who have contracted the virus from other places and have tried to come into the United States. There are now 10 states uh, with confirmed cases of coronavirus, but the President, uh, the White House and the administration uh, want to tell the public that the risk to the U.S. public right now is very low. I want to repeat that, that the immediate risk to the public is low. Still, there are travel uh, restrictions imposed to Iran as well as China. Um, right now, Italy uh, in Europe is starting to get a lot of cases, so they are looking at whether or not we'll have travel restrictions there, and we're con constantly looking at people coming from this region to see if they have uh, fevers or any other symptoms or symptomatic of the coronavirus. Uh, they have declared a public health concern since January 31st on a, fe a federal le level. In the, in the region, in the Caribbean, so far there has only been one, and I'll repeat it, there's only been one confirmed case of coronavirus and that's in the Dur Dominican Republic. There's been a lot of suspect around uh, cases, that, uh, persons under investigation or PAUIs, but I'll let the health commissioner talk a little bit uh, more about that. There is a suspected case, I would say suspected case, of a young lady who traveled to Hong Kong in the BVI, a person under investigation, uh, but no confirmed cases as of this moment when I'm giving this uh, press release. On a local level, we, as you can see, we have been coordinating for quite some time uh, for the coronavirus uh, outbreak, if any. Uh, we have a, a weekly conference call. I participated this, this last Friday uh, discussing it and coordinating any questions or any things that may be coming into the territory. Uh, those uh, uh, efforts in the territory are being led by our Commissioner Encarnacion of uh, Health, who you will be hearing from in a little while. Uh, the coordinating uh, entities include both hospitals, Juan F. Louis, as well as Royal Lester Schneider, 
Vitima, the Department of Tourism, National Guard, Port Authority, Education, Human Services, the Federal Health Qualified Center, uh, both East End and Feder Frederickstead Clinic, as well as property and procurement. I want to re really remind the public that this is not the first time that the Virgin Islands has dealt with a public health uh, concern. Um, we've actually had a public health crisis, uh, several that we've dealt with over the years, dengue being one, chikungunya being another, uh, Zika being another that we've dealt with. So it is not like we don't have experience dealing with these types of uh, issues in our public. Uh, what you can do uh, as a public, and I know some people feel a uh, little bit uh, handicapped by this situation, but the first thing that you can do and remember is not to panic. Um, th there is a lot of things going around, a lot of diseases going around in the world right now, and you have to keep it in perspective. Uh, right now, worldwide, there are about 2,700 deaths as, of, uh, as a result of um, this coronavirus, but last year alone, we had 60,000 deaths due to the flu virus in America only. So there are about 40 to 60,000 people that die from the flu every year. So the one thing that we want to keep people um, in perspective, this is very serious. We need to stay vigilant, um, but we can control this if, if, we, if we just take the measures. And one of those is um, protecting the most vulnerable. Uh, the main people who are suffering from deaths, uh, the highest percentage of deaths are people over 85 years old. Um, to young people with compromised uh, immune systems, this is very serious as well too, but most of the worldwide deaths have been people that are over 50, 60 years of, of age, and the vast majority of them have been over uh, 85 years old. We must remain vigilant uh, about our health, uh, cough into your sleeve. If you feel ill, do not go to work. Keep your hands washed away from your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Uh, this is something I think that we can get a hold of uh, so far. Uh, we have resources aligned and people aligned, uh, professionals in our community dedicated to keeping this coronavirus to a minimum. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'll turn it over to uh, Director Joshin of Vitima, give you a little bit uh, more information about how we're controlling um, the spread of this infectious disease. Um, thank you, Governor Bryan. Uh, the Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency has been in close coordination with the Department of Health since the first case of novel coronavirus reached the United States in Washington State. We conducted an all-states conference call on Sunday, 26 January, to begin our, our vigilance. To support the preparation and coordination efforts within the territory, FITEMA and the Department of Health conducted a discussion and tabletop exercise with key agencies, partners, and we named this Operation Pan Prepared for six hours on Friday the 21st of February 2020. The written after action review of the exercise is complete and was published today, the 2nd of March. In the AAR, we identified nine areas for improvement and recommended actions as well as identification of lead agencies. Since the 13th of February 2020, the Vitima 911 Dispatch Center has been using a questionnaire provided by the Department of Health for individuals requesting the emergency management systems dispatch for flu-like symptoms and to notify first responders if patients have been recently traveled to China. EMS has the adequate supply of proper personal protective equipment and is working with our supply chain to ensure future needs and orders are submitted and tracked. Our knowledge on prevention and preparedness activities for the COVID-19 virus continues to evolve. With our coordinated efforts of first responders and Department of Health as a lead agency in the territory, Vitima stands ready together to bring agencies, both local and federal, if needed. At this time, I'll turn this uh, briefing over to Commissioner Carcion, the Department of Health. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Governor, and thank you, Director Jashin. 
The Department of Health, along with other local and federal partners, is closely monitoring an outbreak of respiratory illness caused by the novel or new coronavirus named COVID-19. The outbreak first started in Wuhan, China, but cases have been identified, as the governor has stated, and growing in, in other international locations, including the United States. I'll have Dr. Ellis be a little bit more specific about the epidemiological aspect of COVID 2019. What I want to speak to you about is as a community and a public health service to each and every one of us, how can you actually be uh, a, a proponent and become part of the public health solution to preventing as, uh, the spread of, of COVID 19? And that is actually going back to what the governor spoke to. How can you prevent it? If you have a cold, take care of yourself, stay home. And do the same as the, for the ones that you love. If someone in your home is sick, think about that. Think about the time in, in which you've actually been close to them. Ensure that they're getting healthy. Ensure that their immune system is where it should be. Um, speak to the to individuals that, that are around you. Um, cough within your sleeve. Uh, don't project. It's, it's, a, it's a virus that's actually spread by droplet. That means when you cough and you project, like you know, you, you, you speak about people, and I'm going to be very candid. Individuals actually spit, spitting when they cough, when they, when they talk. That's actually droplet. Of course, there is a projection when you cough or when you sneeze. So that's why it's important to protect others as well as protecting yourselves. I'm also going to speak to the, to the private entities and agencies within um, the territory. We're going to ask you, when we say that it's a public health crisis, the private entities are also part of the public. So I'm asking you also as private entities, agencies, and, and business people and, and store owners to protect the people that are coming into your stores as well as the ones that are going out. Have hand sanitizers close to, it, close to the door, close to when they come in and when they go out. Ensure that you have signs up indicating that you're asking them to protect themselves. Um, we are, we're doing that with, with the airports as well as the, um, the seaports. We're having information shared with everyone, asking them if they are, if they think that they have been exposed and they're feeling sick. Don't just show up at emergency rooms or physicians' offices. Give them a call. Have, give them some information on you. Let, the, let them tell them what your symptoms are. At that point in time, they will let you know exactly what you need to do. Um, one of the things that we're going to, we're, we're looking at, if you see the individuals behind of me, this is only a very small aspect of the individuals who are collaborating with us to prevent exposure and decrease the risk to our community. We am very proud to say that our private and public partners have all acted up uh, and they have joined us. And like the governor said, every Friday at 2 p.m. we have a very large discussion we're planning one of our biggest collaborative course are both hospitals, Roy Lesson Sider Hospital, as well as Wang Louis Hospital. We are in contact with CDC, as well as Department of Health and Human Services. Spoke with both of them this morning. As, and to let you know, we're also working with the BVI and the Secretary of Health in Puerto Rico to ensure that the collaboration, because they are closest to us, continues. I'd like Dr. Ellis to go ahead and give you some further numbers, explain what needs to be done with COVID-19, and um, Director Francine Lang would also discuss with you. Good afternoon, and thank you, Governor and Commissioner Encarnacion. The Department of Health um, is monitoring the situation in numbers, along with the WHO and the Centers for Disease Control as, as mentioned globally, there's been 87,137 confirmed cases. In China, 79,968 and 2,873 deaths. Outside of China, there have been 7,169 confirmed cases in 58 countries and 104 deaths. In the United States, cumulatively, there have been 472 persons under investigation, or PUIs, and those are suspect cases that require laboratory confirmation, and they're either confirmed or ruled out as negative. There have been 22 total cases confirmed that were locally acquired in the United States. 13 of these were travel-related, 
and nine were person-to-person -person spread with close contacts. This does not include the cases from repatriations. States with confirmed cases are California, Arizona, Washington, Illinois, Massachusetts, Wisconsin, Oregon, Florida, and Rhode Island. The Dominican Republic just announced their first case of COVID-19. At this time, there are no confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Most often spread from person to person happens among close contacts, about six feet. Person to person spread is thought to occur mainly through respiratory droplets produced when an infected, affected person coughs, sneezes, similar to how influenza and other respiratory pathogens spread. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. Typically, with most respiratory viruses, people are thought to be most contagious when they are most symptomatic or the sickest. For confirmed COVID-19 infections, reported illnesses have ranged from people with little to no symptoms to people being severely ill and dying. Symptoms can include fever, cough, shortness of breath, and as stated earlier, the majority of people, 98% of individuals who have gotten infected with this COVID-19 recover. For any suspect cases, the Department of Health does have the capacity to collect samples for laboratory testing, and at this point would be sending samples off island to the CDC for confirmation. We are also waiting to receive our own laboratory testing kits and we'll be able to in the future do the laboratory confirmation on island. There is currently no vaccine to prevent COVID-19 infection. The best way to prevent infection is to avoid being exposed to this virus. However, as a reminder, the Department of Health always recommends everyday preventive actions to help prevent the spread, including avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth with unwashed hands. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue, then throw the tissue in the trash. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces using a regular household cleaning spray or wipe. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, especially after going to the bathroom, before eating, and after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing. Recently returned travelers, if you have been in a country with person-to-person -person spread of the virus within the past 14 days and feel sick with a fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, you should seek medical advice. Call ahead before you go to the doctor's office. Avoid contact with others. Do not travel while sick. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue or your sleeve, not your hands, when coughing. Wash your hands with soap and water immediately after coughing, sneezing, or blowing your nose. This is an emergency, uh, an emerging, rapidly evolving situation, and the Department of Health, along with our partners, will continue to provide updated information as it becomes available. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Francine Lang. I'm the Director of Public Health Preparedness for the Virgin Islands Department of Health. On January 27, 2020, the Virgin Islands Department of Health initiated its preparedness efforts to address the COVID-19 outbreak in China. Weekly internal DOH meetings began on February 3rd, and weekly interagency meetings were convened with territorial and regional partners, BVI and Puerto Rico, on February 7th. We've reviewed and updated our existing response plans, our all hazards, our infectious disease response, and Ebola response with a respiratory disease index, which we did not have before, a respiratory disease annex. The VIDOH's pan flu plan is also being revised. We've participated in 15 meetings with territorial and or regional partners and 14 conference calls with CDC and the Association of State and Territorial Health Officials. We also met with, met with Customs and Border Protection to look at areas at both, hosp, air, both airports for screening of passengers from flights originating at foreign ports. We've exchanged information with our partners. We've shared the CDC daily key points and guidance documents, including cleaning information for ships and screening protocol for 911 call centers and also information for schools. We've responded to five requests for information from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. 
The IDOH is also working with both hospitals to ensure an adequate supply of personal protective equipment is available to verify isolation capacity and ensure that the emergency rooms are equipped to screen and triage potential cases. And as Dr. Uh, Director Joshin um, indicated, we had a joint tabletop exercise that tested our plans on the 21st. And I wanted to give a list of some of the um, partners that joined us for that exercise. We had over 100 persons participating between the two districts, somewhere in the St. Croix, um, Vitima, EOC, and some in the St. Thomas. We had uh, Department of Health and Vitima, the Virgin Islands National Guard, VI Fire Services, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the U.S. Coast Guard, Juan Luis Hospital and Schneider Regional Medical Center, the Virgin Islands Department of Labor, Division of Occupational Safety and Health, Department of Public Works, Department of Education, Property and Procurement, Licensing and Consumer Affairs, Virgin Islands Port Authority, the West Indian Company, Department of Human Services, Office of the Governor, Division of Tourism, the Hotel and Tourism Association, Airport Management, the Virgin Islands Judiciary, Department of Finance, Internal Bureau, Revenue Bureau, and Lime Tree Bay Terminals. This was a collaborative effort that was very successful. We've identified challenges that we're working on, and we will continue to update the public and to refine our plan. As uh, Dr. Ellis says, it's a very dynamic situation. Things are changing daily, and so we're working to uh, make sure that our plans can reflect those. Thank you. In closing, in the event the United States Virgin Islands has a person under investigation, we have the capacity to test them potentially quarantine, conduct con contact tracing, and respond. At this time, we do not have any confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the territory as Dr. Ellis has and the governor has confirmed. If you have traveled to a location with a person-to-person -person spread of COVID-19 and have fever and respiratory symptoms, please call 340-718-1311, extension 3891 or 340 Seven seven four seven four seven seven extension five six four seven to report a, sus a suspect case and receive additional guidance. Again, those numbers are three four zero seven one eight one three one one or three four zero seven seven four seven four seven seven extension five four six seven five four five six four seven. My, my apologies. Thank you all. Uh, before before um, we open up, and I thank you again for joining us today, before we open up for questions, one of the things that I would like to stress, and it, it, it seems if, if it's such a low risk, why are we so alarmed? Um, one of the things that immediately came to mind when I heard about this is we have 18,000 uh, retirees in, in the territory, and uh, I know government retirees, we have 6,000 of them that are over 65. This is a real vulnerable group for this disease, which uh, brings great concern to me. Uh, in the, when I was in Washington last time, we also had a convening of the governors. Uh, we met with the CDC, and the greatest concern around this virus is we know what happens to flu when it gets warm. We know what happens to dengue, chikungunya, as a, as a dry seasons come on. But we don't know what is going to happen with um, COVID uh, virus. We don't know what's going to happen with this coronavirus. So there are a lot of unknowns. So while there is a low risk at this time. I am just asking everyone to be di diligent uh, and be vigilant about your health. The other concern is if this was something more deadly that was uh, um, turned loose in the world, how would we react and how would our resources um, be able to mobilize in order to make sure that Virgin Islanders uh, are, are protected? So think of it as a dry run. Think of it as an active uh, run in preventing the spread of disease. Uh, in the world. And the, the one thing you can see how something from as far as China has already got, make, made its way all the way to the Dominican Republic very rather quickly. Within 60 days, um, we're seeing the event of, um, of the virus in the Caribbean. So continue to uh, follow the instructions that you hear today. And I guess we'll open it up to any questions that the press may have. No questions? Well, thank you and have a fantastic day.